Amen. Genuine servants of Christ or preachers don't really have full control or possession of their lives. Uh, they are slaves of Christ and have no choice but to carry out the orders and commands of the master. Amen. About those preachers who choose to serve themselves, using the name of God and the name of the Lord, Jesus said this about them. In Matthew 7, 21 to 23, Lord everyone, not everyone that said to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name I cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works, and then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that walk in equity. Amen. And this is why. Because of the enormous responsibility that preachers are chosen to carry, Apostle Paul appealed to his congregation in Thessalonica to pray for them. Everyone in the church expects the preacher or the pastor to be praying for them. Amen. But preachers also need prayers too. Amen. In fact, they need much prayer. Amen. Their responsibility is great because Satan's attack on them is strong. We must hence cultivate the attitude of remembering to pray for our preachers at every given opportunity. Amen. And in fact, they need our prayers throughout the seven days of the week. Amen. And you may ask me this morning, why seven days? Listen to Apostle Paul's appeal in 1 Thessalonians 5, 12 to 13. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you, and are over you in the Lord, and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Amen. And in verse 25, he said, Brothers and sisters, pray for us. Amen. Pray for us. There's no day of the week that our preachers don't need our prayers. Starting from Sunday, let us examine it. Amen. Let me prove it for you. Starting from Sunday. We should pray to God to use our preachers as they preach God's word because the day of worship is also a day of work for our preachers. Amen. They are laboring in the world and working to point people to the Lord. In 2 Thessalonians 3 1, Apostle Paul said, Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free cause and be glorified even as it is with you. We must pray that God's word will be given in power, that the Lord's will will be done. A true preacher does not want glory for himself. He wants God to be glorified through his word. And on Monday, we should pray to God to protect our preacher from every enemy. We should let love and spirit of understanding and tolerance reign among us. We must remember we are greater common enemy. As we read in Ephesians 5.12, for our struggle, it's not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Amen. Sundays are challenging days for any preacher. Amen. Mondays can be too as the devil. Amen. The accuser of the brethren loves to bring thoughts of discouragement Amen. and providing us with enough excuses to just give up. Amen. And this is why Apostle Paul appealed in Romans 15, 30 to 31. Now I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord Jesus' sake and for the love of the Spirit that ye strive together with me in your prayers to God for me that I may be delivered from them that do not believe. And also in 2 Thessalonians 3, 2, he said, pray that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. <clears throat> Preachers and pastors frequently become the object of criticism and attack, mostly from their own people. They are sacrificing their life to serve. Sometimes Satan uses the members of the church who are not living and walking in faith 
with God to derail the servants of God by frustrating their efforts Amen. through constant verbal attacks, Amen. undermining their consistent efforts and dedication to God's work. Amen. We must also pray to God to protect our preachers in every way, spiritually, <laughs> physically, Amen. mentally, and emotionally. We must pray especially to God to protect that which is dearest to them, their family. Amen. The devil will love nothing more than to destroy another of God's servants because he knows that if he destroys the shepherd, all the flock will end up under his control. Amen. This reminds me of a pastor's dialogue with a, pro a, a prominent lady member of his church. It went this way. A lady went to her pastor and said, Pastor, I won't be going to your church anymore. Ah, the pastor responded, but why? You are very important in this church. The lady said, ah, I saw a woman gossiping about another member. I saw a man that is a hypocrite. The worship member team are not living right. They are living wrong. People are looking at their phone during service. These are among so many other things wrong in your church. The pastor replied, okay, but before you go, do me a favor. Take a full glass of water, put it in your hand, and walk around the church three times without spilling a drop on the ground. After, leave the church if you desire. The lady thought, hmm, too easy. She walked three times around the church as the pastor had asked her without dropping a drop of water. When she finished, she told the pastor she was ready to leave. The pastor said, before you leave, I want to ask you one more question. When you were walking around the church, did you see anyone gossiping? Did they reply, no? Did they say any hypocrite? The lady said, no. Anyone looking at their phone? The lady said, no. You know why? No. You were focused on the class to make sure you didn't drop or stumble or spill any water. Amen. It's the same with our life, isn't it? When we keep our eyes and mind on Jesus, we don't have time to see the mistakes of others. And we don't even look for any opportunity to arise or persecute your pastor. Amen. We will reach out a helping hand Amen. to them and concentrate on our own work with the Lord. Amen. I used to be like that. Like that lady. Hallelujah. By watching who is dancing and who is not clapping their hands. And who is always coming late. They habitually come out to church. Until one day, I softly challenged our former Dickiness Martha. While she was not running after these children and youth adults, not dancing, not clamping, or even showing any interest on what is going on in the service, she replied, hmm, Reverend Lambo, if I concentrate on them, I will miss my blessing. <laughs> you are noticing them because you two are not in the spirit of worship. <laughs> I said, oh. <laughs> and since then, I just look at them. But when I turn around, I see my reverend beside me, dancing away with her eyes closed as if it's nobody's business. Amen. Then we well, start dancing and clapping and smiling. Hallelujah. So when others are praising and worshiping God, and you choose to just stand there like a log of wood, as if you have no life in you, it's your blessing that you are missing, not your pastor or anybody, except of course the King Thomas who is still after you people. <laughs> and you too will also soon get tired of God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> and then on Tuesday, pray to God, to lead your pastors, your preachers, as they lead us.